Okay, so let's start talking a little bit about an introduction to the normal distribution. Okay, so this is kind of our first entry into a kind of a typical distribution. The normal distribution is also known as a Gaussian distribution or maybe even more commonly as a bell curve. So we'll see a bell curve kind of looks like this. There's some neat things about a bell curve. A bell curve is symmetrical, meaning if we were to fold it about our, the dotted line, it would match up perfectly. So because of that, it means that the mean and the median of this distribution are both at this center point. And we're really going to focus on the mean. So we've talked a little bit too about the standard deviation. It talks about like how far away from the mean are we. To draw a fully defined normal distribution, we only need two pieces of information. We need to know what the mean is, and we need to know what the standard deviation is. Now, what's really neat is that a uh, normal distribution, we can find where the standard deviation is by finding the inflection point. So if you remember back from geometry, inflection points are where a curve switches from concave up to concave down or from concave down to concave up. So we can draw this really easily. So I'm just going to do a little dot there and a little dot there. And that is one standard deviation away from the mean, either above or below. And now that I know how big the standard deviation is, I can take it in steps. So there's two standard deviations, two standard deviations, go out a little further, three standard deviations, and three standard deviations. Now what's really interesting is that we can see that the vast majority of the area under the curve is between plus or minus one standard deviations away from the mean. If we go two, we get more data, but it's less. And then the next step out, the area under the curve is even less. We can think about the area under the curve being 100%, and then these steps are just parts of that 100%. So we, there are some things that are called the empirical rules, and we know that plus or minus one standard deviation is roughly 68% of the area under the curve. And then we can continue out. We can say, okay, well then how much data is plus or minus two standard deviations? That happens to be 95%. And then, you know, we can keep on going. We can go plus or minus three standard deviations, and that is 99.7%. So we can see as we go basically, you know, three standard deviations away, we've captured almost all of our data. Now, technically, the normal distribution extends from positive infinity and to negative infinity. So it goes in both directions uh, forever. But as you go further and further away from the mean, the likelihood of these events decreases pretty significantly. So let's talk a little bit about uh, maybe an example. So we know that for men in the United States, you know, the mean is basically 5 feet 10 inches, which is equal to 70 inches. So that's the mean. We'll say that the standard deviation is then equal to 3 inches. Okay, so we could then figure out, okay, what's this distribution? How far are we? Or, and determine how far one standard deviation is away from the average. So we know that mu is equal to 70. So then one step up would then take us to 73, then we got another step up, 76, and then 79, we can do the same thing backwards, 67, 64, 61, etc., etc. So we've got these kind of distinctions. Now, sometimes, you know, people are exceedingly tall, like, you know, Shaquille O'Neal or some of these other extremely tall basketball players. They're way on the end. There are a lot of standard deviations away. Now, sometimes what what we want to know is how many standard deviations away from the mean is an observation, if it's normally distributed. So if we're a lot of standard deviations away, we'd say, hey, this observation is pretty weird. Or maybe it's a pretty normal observation. So let's take a look at that. So in order to do that, we want to know what the z-score is. The z-score literally tells us how many standard deviations away from the mean are we, and in what direction. So let's take somebody who's like, six feet five inches so they would be 77 inches 
Um, so that would be our measurement. X equals 77 inches. And we want to know how strange of an occurrence that is. Well, the z-score tells us how many standard deviations away we are. That would be equal to x minus mu divided by sigma, the number of standard deviations away we are from the mean. So if we put this in, we could say then that 77, our 6 foot 5 guy, minus 70, the average height of men, divided by 3, our standard deviation. That would equal then 7 divided by 3, which is equal to 2.33. So he's two, over two standard deviations away. One, two, and just a little bit more. And we see that he's pretty rare. Once you get past about two standard deviations away from the mean, we start having a strange occurrence. So we could compare, okay, is being 77 inches or is being a 68 inches a more weird event? So let's take a shorter guy, 68 inches. And let's do the same thing. So this one equals 68 minus 70 divided by 3. That one's going to equal negative 2 divided by 3, which equals negative 0.667. Okay, so the guy who is 68 inches or 5 feet 8 inches tall, he was only like 2 thirds of a standard deviation away. It's negative, so he's to the left. But he's only two thirds of a standard deviation away, and being six foot five is is 2.3 standard deviations away. So we could say that it is more strange or more rare for someone to be six foot five than it is for somebody to be five foot eight. And then we can take these and also use the z-score to help us know if like um, compare scores from different years of tests and try to standardize uh, those comparisons. But we can say, basically, the distance away from the mean that you are in terms of number of standard deviations can let you know how rare of an occurrence an event is.